there is a clear winner for the best video editing computer. It's faster, it's more efficient, and in 2025, it's more capable than it ever has been. And it's all thanks to streamlined design and some exceptional engineering. There's no doubt about that. I've used both PC and Mac since childhood, and I have used Adobe Premiere and DaVinci Resolve on both of those systems. I have plenty of experience with both, and one of them has consistently performed better than the other. So in this video, I'm gonna objectively break it down and let you hear from an outside expert in the field so you can make the right decision. By the way, I'm Ethan. I've done millions of views across various channels with the content that I've made, and this video editing thing is all I do all day long. I have some experience in this field. All right, so let's dive in. Macs are just wildly efficient. Watt for watt, they can outperform a PC, no problem, no sweat. But the story doesn't end there. Since Apple transitioned Mac to their own silicon, the M-series chips, uh, the computers work a little differently than they used to. You see, in the M-series chips, all of the parts that you find in a regular computer are all fused into one chip. The CPU, the GPU, and the RAM, it's all just one thing. And there are two main benefits to this. The first benefit is speed. The reason being is that because all of these parts are so close together, because they're fused together into a single chip, you're not waiting around for these parts to communicate with each other. They're just there. The second benefit is efficiency. Now, while it might be easy to confuse speed for efficiency in this scenario, they're not the same. These chips, just because there's so many different parts fused together, they're designed to balance battery life with performance. That means that you can get computing power that packs a punch but lasts a while with a good battery, hence the efficiency. The next thing that contributes to the fact that the M-series chips are so efficient is what's called unified memory. Remember a minute ago how I said the RAM is connected to the CPU and the GPU? Because this is the case, everything gets to share the same pool of memory. Think of it as having like one big table for everybody to use and sit at instead of everybody having individual desks to pull their resources from. This is Corey Garrett, an expert professional in the field of video production, and this is what he has to say about this. I mean, the Mac Studio I'm using now, I've been using for uh, maybe like three-ish years. And I mean, it's an M1 Ultra, which for what it is, is it's like a, it's a good computer, you know? And if I was just doing like really basic video editing and not really like doing uh, heavy color grades, it, uh, that computer is old. You know, like it's already outdated. My system's loaded up with RAM too. It's it's way up there. I mean, it's way more than my PC has. And for $8,000 for that little computer, I could build an insane powerhouse PC workstation, like a workstation that's dedicated for creative work. And while it is impressive that Macs can do everything that they can do with what they have, if you don't take into consideration that PC technically has unlimited access to unlimited power, then measurements mean nothing. This brings me to my second point. PCs can brute force their way through calculations that Macs just can't. Because you have the freedom to load a PC with whatever parts you want because you're the one building it, you can load it up with a monster CPU, for example, like 16, 32, or sometimes even up to 64 cores. And if you don't know what a CPU core is, think of them kind of like chefs in a kitchen. The more of them you have, the more you can do at the same time without breaking a sweat. All hands on deck kind of thing. In comparison, M chips usually tap out at around 24 to 32 cores. And they're paired with a power efficient GPU, which means they draw less power, which means they underperform relative to some of their counterparts. Keyword, some of their counterparts. This matters because PC can be pushed way harder for brute force rendering for things like AI training, 3D animation, color grading, whatever. And here's another thing to consider in this category. PCs can be loaded up with custom cooling systems. That means that you can load water cooling loops into your PC to keep the parts cool all the time or just load it up with giant fans or both if you want. This means that you can do more without having to worry about overheating because you have the big fan, because you have the water cooler. But by far the biggest and most important thing to mention here is the fact that you can add discrete GPUs. Meaning when you're building a PC, you can add an entire other system specifically for the purpose of processing your graphics. This way, all of that work doesn't fall on the same chip responsible for CPU calculations. And remember, in comparison, Apple's GPU is always power efficient, which means it's drawing less power and not performing as much as its PC counterpart. If you've made it this far into the video, don't forget to drop a like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Now let's get back to the video. And obviously, it depends on what part you're working with, but the point is, is that PC has more power potential. If I'm a uh, handy man, and I need a new drill, I don't have to buy a whole new toolkit. I just buy a new drill, you know? And so if I need a new CPU, if I feel like the CPU is bottlenecking because of my other components or whatever, I can upgrade the CPU. If I finally have enough money to get a brand new GPU, I can get a new GPU. And GPUs work across 
everything, dude. Like you don't need to worry about compatibility. A PCIe slot is a PCIe slot. But if all this sounds like just too much to think about for you, Mac is one step ahead of the game just because they made the ultimate one size fits all computer chip, right? Well, this brings me to my third point. Macs are indeed extremely clever. I mean, after all, their design is focused to do one thing and that is allow the user to focus more on their work and not the system that they're using to make that work. If the user needs to think about whether or not their processor is running too hot while they're trying to make their art, well then suddenly they're not as focused on their art as they should be. All of this power efficiency that we keep on mentioning really does have a purpose. While a PC can be made to behave like a V8 muscle car, Macs are usually a little more toned down and designed to last a little bit longer reliably while doing the same tasks over and over and over. And that's not to say that PCs don't last, do not get my words confused. All I'm saying is that if your CPU isn't burning up while trying to render some crazy 3D animation or a super heavy color grade, it's probably going to last longer than it would if it didn't have the proper safeguards. Because think about it, if the M chips didn't purposely limit their power consumption, therefore purposely limiting their computing ability, how hot would those chips get inside the body of a MacBook, MacBook Pro, a Mac Studio? A Mac's cleverness really does boil down to how well their OS is optimized for all of their devices. If you've never experienced using a Mac, I really do recommend it. I mean, every aspect of their ecosystem is designed to work seamlessly between communications, between workflow, productivity. It's great. For example, let's say I have an awesome design that I made in Procreate on my iPad and I want to move it over to my MacBook Pro. It's simple. I'll just use AirDrop. It's the Bluetooth based file sharing system built into all of Apple's devices. That's great. That's awesome. I love using that. Another, you're spending some time putting together a motion graphic for one of your videos when one of your friends texts you about dinner plans for tonight. You can respond without ever having to leave the creative application that you're in. It doesn't disrupt your workflow. You just respond and you're off. That's one of the things that make the Mac ecosystem so just well refined for what they do. But you might be wondering what happens when that chip starts to slow down? Or maybe I want to upgrade so I could work on bigger, heavier projects. Well, then I have a solution for you. And that brings me to my fourth and final point. In the long run, PCs are better for their price to performance ratio. And that's a fact. There's no debating that. Due to the fact that PCs all have separate parts, they can be removed and upgraded one at a time without having to upgrade the entire system for the purpose of replacing one part. So if the applications on your PC are crashing a lot, you can take out your old RAM, shove in some new RAM for 200 bucks, and it's working like new, it's working faster than it was, and you only spent $200 without having to replace the entire computer. Or maybe you wanna add some really heavy color grades to your edit, but not have to worry about laggy and choppy playback. Well, you can get a discrete GPU. You just get a graphics card, shove it in your PC, and you're good to go. You don't have to go buy another fancy $4,000 computer. You can buy a graphics card. Sometimes that costs a quarter of that and will still run circles around the Mac equivalent. You don't have to replace everything else when replacing parts for your PC. That's just what's beautiful about the PC ecosystem. If you really want to compare these two systems against each other, if the CPU stops working in a Mac, well then so does the GPU and the RAM. Or if you just decide you want something better, you have to get an entirely new computer. You can't just spend a few hundred dollars and see a massive performance boost. That just doesn't exist on the Mac. That's only possible in the world of PC. There's a very obvious difference between just like what you can accomplish with a individual GPU component when we're just talking about like graphics processing versus an M1. And, and again, I'm coming from an M1 experience. I haven't really experienced an M2 or an M3 Ultra. I would imagine that they're better. They better be better than an M1 Ultra. But I, in my experience, I wouldn't upgrade to that anyways, because I have to buy the whole new computer to even experience it. And I could just upgrade my GPU and have a better experience here my home workstation. If you couldn't tell by now, I'll take PC any day. I am so much more of a PC advocate for desktop computing than I am for Apple. In terms of just the philosophy of what you're able to achieve with the PC, Mac doesn't even come close. I have personally had such a horrendous time with Apple desktop computing that I will never consider an Apple desktop for hardcore creative video work ever again. There's literally nothing in the world that could make me want to use an Apple desktop. I just honestly believe that they lack a sufficient amount of computing power to be able to do what I want to do with the hardware that I'm using. And I'm not just doing 1080p MP4, I'm shooting on 6K B-RAW. You know what I mean? That's a, a much heavier codec to work with than just something like 1080p or even just 4K log. So yeah, having a dedicated GPU is important for stuff like that. And in my experience, a Mac desktop just can't keep up with my workflow. Render bugs are everywhere. Graphics glitches and playback are the worst. The majority of my issues stem from graphics related glitches in the Mac 
Mac system. But then again, that processing component is in the same chip as the CPU and the RAM. It's all pulling from each other's resources and there's not enough for the graphics processing. And that's just where I prefer having a Windows-based PC system. But I do have to give credit to Apple where credit is due. I do have a MacBook Pro that I use for on-the-go computing. I have an iPhone, I have an Apple Watch, and I have an iPad. And those things are great for when I need to be able to throw something together quick and dirty on the go. I'm not focused on super heavy color grades, the massive film emulation, power grades. I'm not doing any of that with the iPad or the MacBook Pro. They work great for what they do, but I'm most of the time using proxies to, to cut stuff together. Or if I'm not doing that, I have just the basic local files plugged into the devices there it's it's not anything crazy i honestly don't think that there's any other system that comes close to what apple can do when you're away from your desk but when it comes to sitting down at your desk i'm not going to take any other machine other than a pc because i know that pc is going to be able to take me where i need to go when i sit down i get my headphones on and i'm locked in there is just no substitute for a pc apple just cannot keep up in that regard we pretty much covered all the points you need to know in order for you to make your decision so what'd you think are you thinking apple or are you thinking pc what do you need it for what camera are you shooting with what are your considerations when making this decision for yourself if you want to support me my link to patreon is down in the description below or you can just join a membership here on youtube without ever having to leave the website and if you want to pick up some really good luts for your color grading you can pick them up right here on youtube linked in my youtube store don't forget to like this video if you found it helpful. Don't forget to leave a comment. I want to know what you're thinking. And most importantly, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.